Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to talk through one of the fairly new functions in BC called Master Data Management. Um, so what is Master Data Management? Well, it's a function within Business Central that we can use to pass data from one company to another. Um, so you can set up the Master Data Management module and it will allow you to pass data and configuration from one company in your Business Central environment to another company in your Business Central environment. Um, so just before we get into the demo here, I just want to show you here in my production environment, I'm currently logged into the test company for demo, so the test code for demo company. But just for the purposes of the demo, I also have my Cronus UK Limited company here as well. So that exists within the same production environment. So I've got my Cronus UK Limited company in one tab, and in the other tab, I have my test code for demo. Now, when setting up the master data management module, um, what I should say is that you only need to do that setup in the company in which you want to receive the data. Um, so only those companies in which you want to receive the copied data, do you need to go ahead and do the setup for master data management. Um, and what I'm just gonna do within my test code for demo, so the, the uh, company in which I want to receive the data, I'm gonna go ahead and search for master data management or MDM. Um, so I'm just going to come here to my master data management setup. I do also have a result here for um, synchronization tables, but there's a shortcut to that within the master data management setup page. So let me go here and the first thing that we need to do, so I've already done it for the purposes of this demo, but we need to select a source company. Um, and in this example, the source company is Cronus UK Limited. So um, if there was no company selected here, this would be a drill down box, which I could use to look up all of the companies in this environment. And I select in this field, the company from which I want to copy the data and configuration. Um, so as you can see here, my source company is selected as Cronus UK Limited. Um, so the next thing that I need to do here is I need to go into my synchronization tables and on the synchronization tables page, uh, we basically have a list of the tables that we want to send data from Cronus UK Limited to this company that we're logged into right now. Um, so a lot of these are the out of the box tables, so they come as part of the default configuration but you'll notice I can add a new record in here as well. So I can drill down um, into new and I can see a full list of all the tables in Business Central and I can add new tables in here if I want to. Um, but for now, what we'll do is we'll just stick with um, the um, out of the box tables um, and what I'm going to do is go into the customer table here and I can go into fields. Um, so what this will do is it will show me the fields on the customer table and at field level I can enable or I can disable these fields for synchronization. Um, and I can select these on mass. If I say select more and select a few fields there, I can say disable or enable using cool little actions up here at the top. And that just saves me having to go through each field and change them manually myself like that. And as well as the enable, disable actions here, we do have the update fields. So um, what this does is it basically ensures that the fields within this particular table are updated. So I guess if we add a, a new field um, and we want to use that as part of the synchronization, we can use the update fields action there. Um, so some of the other fields here that we have is the validate field boolean and the overwrite local change. So the validate is very simple. It um, sort of makes sure that the field um, value is validated before it's sent to our company. 
Um, and the overwrite local change here is basically saying that if we make a change within our receiving company to that particular field, um, it will be overwritten by the master data management functionality. And you can see here, I mean, it's just something we'll see later in the demo. I've enabled that for my customer table and the name field on my customer table. So validate and overwrite local change there. Um, but the idea on this page is you enable and disable the relevant fields for your particular business central setup um, for the master data management data synchronization. Um, and let me just jump back here. I'll just say that we do have the overwrite local changes checkbox here as well. So if you enable that checkbox here, it will enable the overwrite local changes for all of the fields on that particular table. Um, so another function here that's quite useful is we can add filters to our um, master data management synchronization criteria. So if you drill down into here, you can see we've got a filter where blocked is equal to blank, um, but you can add other filters here if you want to. So I don't know, customers that belong to a particular dimension or customers that belong to a particular region, you can add those sorts of filters in. So only that data is synchronized with this particular company. So. Um, I guess that could be useful if you have multiple companies and how you split up your um, sort of dimensions and, and customers and vendors and other such data. Um, so once we have set up all the tables here that we want to synchronize, we can go back and we can use the start initial synchronization function. And what this will do is for the first time, it will send the data from Cronus UK Limited into our test code for demo. And I can go into here afterwards as well, and it basically just gives me an overview of what has happened. So you can see here, we have all of the tables here that were listed as part of the initial synchronization, and it tells me the job queue entry status is finished and the job status was successful. Um, and all this does is it runs for the first time that you're doing the data synchronization. It just basically copies the setup from our source company to our target company. Um, and we have synchronization mode here. Um, it's either set to full synchronization or match-based coupling. And this is normally set up based on whether or not you have records in the target company table when you're setting up the initial synchronization. So if there is a record there already, like there was in the marketing setup, because there's, there's a single record in that table, it's set to match-based coupling. Whereas if there were no records in that table um, at the point where you set up the initial sync, it would be full synchronization. Um, so just to recap what we would have done so far is we've come into the master data management setup. We've applied a source company. We've set up some synchronization tables. We've set up the fields underneath there and then we've said start initial synchronization. Um, and that will go through and sync all of the tables. Um, and obviously also you need to have enabled your data synchronization as well. Now, I can't show you this because this has happened already, but you can see from the function here um, that we've synchronized general ledger codes, customers, dimensions, currencies, country regions, all that data has passed from our source company to our target company, our receiving company. Now, what we'll do is we'll just compare some of the data. So if I go to customers here in my test code for demo, you can see here I've got my demo customer for demo. Now, if I switch back to my Cronus UK Limited company here, so this is our source company. I can also go to customers and I can see I've got the same list of customers. So if we focus purely on my demo customer for demo, what I'm gonna go ahead and do 
is just change the name field here within my source company. So I'm going to change the name to change one. So I've just made that change within the Cronus UK Limited Company. And what I'm going to do is go back into my test code for demo. Just going to hit F5 on my keyboard and you can see that change one has now automatically been set as the name for customer C0010. So if I switch back, you can see Cronus UK Limited is change one as the name for our customer and test code for demo is also change one as the name for our customer. So this is basically how the master data management works. So if you change a record within your um, source company, it changes that record within your target companies, within your receiving companies. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a slight change here. So if I go back to MDM and I'm going to go to synchronization tables, I'm going to go customer fields and this time I'm going to uncheck overwrite local change here for our name field. So what we did there was for the customer table, I have said we no longer want to overwrite local changes. Now, what I must do is go to my customers table in my target company, and I'm gonna change the name myself in here. So I'm gonna say test customer for MDM demo. And now what I'm going to do is go back to my Cronus UK Limited company. So I'm going to go back to my source company here. And I'm going to change the name again here of our customer to change to. So just to recap there, we have changed the Cronus UK Limited customer C00010. We've changed their name to change to. So if I now go back to test Kofa demo, we see our customers here, C0010. And if I hit F5 here, you can see the, the data refreshing over this area here. It is not changing the name for our customer. So I'll just come off the screen and back on just to show you for the demo. It's not changing the name. So why isn't it changing the name? Well, if I go back to our MDM and synchronization tables over here, what we said on the customer table in fields was we said overwrite local changes is equal to no. So we unticked that box. So that's the reason why it's not updating the field in our target company anymore. But I can see some more information here. If I go into my synchronization log, um, we have a log here of what's happened. And if I go into the failed um, um, record here, it basically tells us the error. So the data could not be updated because of the following error. Record number C00100 was uh, modified locally since the last synchronization. Um, so basically because we've disabled that functionality, it's not allowing us um, to update that field using the master data management. Um, so that is essentially how the functionality works. I mean, I'll, I'll leave you guys to have a play with that. Please feel free to, to go ahead in a sandbox environment and, uh, and get comfortable with the way that it works. Um, a few other things on this is that um, it, it won't cover deletions. So if I was to go to my target company and delete a record, um, it would not delete that same record in my target company. So um, a deletion in the source does not result in a deletion in the target company. So just want to be uh, to be weary of there. 
Um, and the other thing here, just show you very quickly, is that the functionality all works through the job queue. So if I go to the job queue entries, and bear in mind, this is in my target company now. Um, if I go to job queue entries, um, I can see a whole load of job queue entries here centered around the MDM, the master data management functionality. And we can see they've even assigned a job queue category code here to all of those different um, job queue entries. Um, so we've just got a bunch of those job queue entries which are constantly scanning for any changes which may have been made to those tables that we are synchronizing in this um, particular company. Um, and just one other thing that I've just thought of, um, if you're doing this setup and configuration across multiple companies, you can use the import and export setup here um, which um, will basically allow you to take the setup from one target company and import that into another target company if you need to. Um, so I guess if you have you know, three companies, you wanna send from one company to two of your other companies, you can set up, do all the configuration in one of the receiving, one of the target companies and export the setup and then go to your other receiving or target company and import the configuration into there. Um, okay, so that's everything that I wanted to cover for this video. So I hope you guys found that useful um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much.